thanks to the support as a channel member, Freddie Finlow. Hang on, so you mean to tell me we can train and do train at St George's Park, where England train? This St George's Park. And we've got £5 million to spend. How on earth is this club in League Two? Hello and welcome to Club 2, Part 2 of Non-League to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have a couple of games for you in League 2. We're at home against Sutton, away against Northampton. But most important of all, the January transfer window is open. And you know what that means, boys and girls. It's time to spend some of this enormous pot of cash we've got. Since you were last with me, this is what's gone on. As you can see, we have come in and started winning football matches, including a 7-0 win over Chesterfield in just my second match as my manager of the club we did lose against Doncaster but we've since won three in a row against Exeter Carlisle and Walsall and we currently find ourselves fourth in the league just five points behind my former club Tamworth I I think we're getting promoted this year boys and girls I have already made a little bit of a dip into the transfer market as well I made a I, I made a note in the last episode that we'd got some trialists in we continued bringing in trialists all over the place we made permanent signings in the shape of Finn Azaz who has come straight in to play as our attacking midfielder he did get the flu immediately when he arrived so didn't make his debut immediately and I think he's made me sick as well so if you're hearing anything like that in my voice that's why it's Finn Azaz's fault because of that flu. Uh, but we also brought in Ross Stewart on a free transfer who has nine caps for Scotland and has also played at quite a high level of football, uh, previously being in the Premier League with Southampton, um, scored 24 goals in League One for Sunderland a few years ago. I think in real life he's had a few injury problems but was just available on a free transfer, didn't have a club having not been used by Southampton um, in a number of years now but has come straight in, got five Five goals from five and a 7.56 average. Definitely too good for League Two. And we're having a lovely time with him. We've also brought in Darnell Furlong, who is a right back who was previously with West Brom. Played 22 games in the championship with West Brom last year. 38 the year before. So he'd been a regular player in the championship, in the Premier League, all his career for him to be without a club going into December was bonkers. We've brought him in as well. It's taken him a little bit of a while to get up to match fitness. Um, we've only given him one substitute appearance so far, but he will be used once we can get him fit. And then lastly, Reese Burke is a 29 year old centre back um, who is previously off of Luton and Hull. Again, Premier League Championship experience, played 24 games in the Premier League the season Luton were there. They didn't really use him after they got relegated. And again, just kind of discarded him at 28, 29 years old. It's the kind of thing I'd do. But this is what we weren't really in a position to bring in young players. So we brought in a bunch of players in their prime and we still have loads of money to spend. Our uh, our FFP wage budget that we're allowed is £115 per week. We're £115,000 per week. So we are close to... To, or our wage budget is just below that with two and a half million pounds to spend. But we do have a lot of players who want to leave because we got relegated. So they're effectively all for sale. So I'm expecting a lot of them to go and then we'll make some, uh, make some more transfer moves. Uh, but we've got enough for probably two players and like I say, a decent amount of money to spend while staying within those budgets initially. And based on the form that we're in, we don't really need a lot. This is a team that was in League One last year, got relegated, Never should have been in mid-table anyway. It was all because the previous manager was a coward. And uh, with doing very little to the squad, we've been able to get them back in that promotion fight. And Tamworth, obviously, are going to fall out and we're going to take the spot and everyone in Tamworth is going to hate me. Tamworth, by the way, have appointed a new manager, Paul Cook, who'd been out of work after getting fired by Chesterfield and they've given him 1.3k a week. He's earning more at Tamworth than I'm earning here at Burton. The world has just decided I'm not allowed to earn decent money as a football manager. 
clearly. Um, the other thing that I've done, having now discovered that Burton do play at the, or do train at St George's Park, the National Football Centre where England do all their training with superb training facilities and superb youth facilities, um, I'm trying to push that side of things. So I've asked us to improve our youth level, improve our youth recruitment, improve our junior coaching, um, maybe get an under-21 teams. We don't even have one of those. Um, and actually, you take advantage of the fact we've got this incredible facility, best training facilities in England should we not use them I'd rather spend this money on building up the youth system and taking this team to the championship rather than spending two and a half million pound on players now but we'll we'll see how January takes me obviously if a lot of those players leave then we're going to have to bring in some replacements for them. All of which brings us to today's game against Sutton. Sutton are down in 18th in the league, so theoretically should be a relatively comfortable win for our new look side. We've got Whiteman in goal, a back four of long throw specialist Hamer, Hughes, Tomkinson and Long at right back. I actually don't know that we necessarily needed Furlong because Sam Long's quite good. Um, I guess we probably do need to bring Furlong in at some point, but... I've not even got him on the bench today. We should probably get him on the bench, shouldn't we? We we probably do. we're paying him quite a lot of money. We probably do need to use him as a player with Premier League experience. Our midfield is then Oshilaya and Harper, and then up front we've got Stewart. Azaz is in behind him. I remember those big lumps of strikers that I played up front together in the last episode. Now they're our wingers. Nimzik on the left, Stockton on the right, and they both do an excellent job coming in as inside forwards. We basically got a front three of big meaty boys with Azaz just pulling all of the strings and Hamer hurling in long throws at the big meat boys. And it definitely seems to be working. Let's get the team submitted and hopefully show, uh, de demonstrate us scoring an absolute ton of goals, which is what we've been doing. It's the thing this team couldn't do before I arrived. The reason we were struggling in the league is because we weren't scoring goals. We're now scoring goals for fun because we've signed a striker who's too good for us and then built the rest of the team around making the most of set pieces and getting the best out of our big meaty boys up front. We don't really have anyone with a huge amount of pace. What we do have, like I say, is is physicality, is power and long bursting forward, slides it across to Finn Azaz and with five minutes on the clock, Azaz has his first goal in a Burton shirt, put us 1-0 up and that is lovely, lovely, lovely. More of that, please. We are, we're just going to tear this lot apart today. I've officially decided this stay in League 2 is going to be a brief one. We are going places with this football club. The facilities that we've got, the money that we've got, the one thing that might potentially hold us back from being at this club for a seriously long period of time and just taking them all the way to the Premier League is the stadium. It is a small one and I don't know that there's much in the in the way of expansion capacity as, as he's injured again. He might have a bit of an injury proneness issue. He arrived, immediately got the flu, then got a tight calf, and now this is his third injury since signing a month ago. That's not ideal. He's very good, but if he's going to be injured all the time, he might not be a long-term solution for us. We're going to bring Leonard on into that attacking midfield position. He's not quite the same, though. There's Hamer with an... I was going to say with another one of his long throws. He's just basically not aimed at any of our players, though, which is not really part of the script when it comes to that situation. Um, getting back onto the stadium, I will be scouting the stadium out for myself and assessing the expansion capacity this weekend. But first, Jak Jacob, Jakob, I don't know, Jacob, Niemzik has just scored to put us 2-0 up and it's once again just driving it across the face of goal and we've got players lining up to just tap these ones in and we can do goals like this all day long. This is one of the reasons why Furlong isn't getting in the team because Long not only... He's really, really effective in this wing-back role and quite the creator for us. He's also our captain now um, and two assists today. Furlong is going to have to wait a little bit longer before he can force his way into this team, if he does at all. I think he is the highest paid player at the club based on that Premier League pedigree, but he might not get used if Long continues to play as well as he is. But as I was saying, I will be scouting out the Pirelli Stadium for myself this weekend. So if you are in the Burton area, the general Burton area, and want to come along and say hello to your old pal Kev, I am going to be at the Burton-Stevenage match this weekend, um, which let me just find the date for you while we score another goal, the 9th of December. So if you're watching this video when it first comes out, 9th of December, that's 2023, obviously. 
because that's when the video was released. Um, Burton versus Stevenage in Burton. I'm going to be in the uh, the the stat the the terrace along the along the side of the pitch. I had to pick an area. I think there's terracing on one of the sides opposite the main stand. I'm going to be in that terrace. If you want to come along, say hello. I'll be doing a match day vlog and that'll be out at the weekend as well, hopefully, as long as I don't get any more poorly, thanks to this flu that Finn Azaz has given me. But we are 3-0 up at halftime. I said we'd dominate today and we are playing very, very well. Looks like Tamworth for winning as well. They did have a little bit of a rough spell straight after I left, but it looks like the new manager has come in and got them uh, got them performing a little bit again. Obviously, the dream scenario for me, for the wider public of Staffordshire in general, um, the idea would be for both us and Tamworth to get promoted, and it would be a lot of fun to build a little rivalry between us. I know back in Burton's non-league days, uh, Burton and Tamworth were rivals, both down in non-league together, but it's been a good 15 years or so since Burton had their rapid rise up the league and kind of forgot about their old rivalries with the likes of Tamworth and now try and pretend to have a rivalry with Derby. It might be nice to bring a real rivalry back to Burton. We'll, we're going to give that a good go. Sutton have got a goal back here, which isn't the end of the world because it does mean we don't have to play clean, clean sheet bonuses, which we're, we're obviously keen on. That's Leanne Goal playing for them as well. Long-time viewers might remember Leanne Goal not only as a former Peterborough player, so he would have shown up in Peter, in my posh saves five years or so back, um, but he was also something of a hero in a previous non-league legend save. I don't remember which one, but I do remember Leanne Goal scoring lots of goals at a point in history for us. Stuart hasn't played very well at all today. Um, so we're going to take him off. Adshed is going to come on as well to play in that uh, defensive midfield position. And uh, Sutton are trying to force their way back into this game. I'm not sure I approve of these shenanigans that they uh, they seem to be attempting. Uh, Stockton gets the tackle in there, uh, but and doesn't end up coming away with the ball. And Angol is in. We've mentioned him, and now he's scored. That's his 10th goal of the season. Um, although I think this one's been disallowed. What started and was supposed to be us just comfortably beating a team down in the bottom half of the table. They are they are causing us a few problems here in this second half. I think we're going to make a couple more changes because we've got more tired legs on the pitch. Leonard with the in-swinging corner looking for Harper, which is a weird target for us. Right, Long is tired, so Darnell Furlong can come on now at right back. And this is our final stoppage, so we're also going to bring on Lonwick he can come on for Sam Hughes and uh, fingers crossed the defensive changes just shore things up a little bit at the back. I really, I would like Furlong to be a success because like I say, we're spending a lot of money on him, um, but it was more a case of I may have been distracted by a shiny thing, a former Premier League player, um, when in actual fact, we didn't really need to strengthen it right back at all. And... Uh, we might end up with something something of a problem there. Unless, of course, Long ends up leaving. So I think he is one of the players who wants to leave the club off the back of uh, the relegation last season. Although you would think if we can get ourselves back up into the automatic promotion spots, the ones who did want to leave because of relegation might chill out knowing that we're about to get promoted back up again. Who knows? We shall see. Luckily, it doesn't seem to be affecting their performances massively because we are playing well in very good form and uh, continuing to win matches. So fingers crossed. If they're not causing too much in the way of disruption, I'm not desperate to get rid of all of them. But at the same time, I'm not desperate to keep any of them because I question their loyalty. So if any of them do, uh, if we get offers for any of them, we probably will look to accept if they're reasonable offers and rebuild with a bunch of uh, bunch of players who actually want to be there. Jaden Williams puts the cherry on top of the cake. Our fourth goal of the afternoon. 4-1 now. And he is, uh, he is our quick striker. We've got all these big meaty boys. Williams is the one who can come on and offer something a little bit different because he's a little bit more mobile. I imagine the locals are a little bit confused while we're playing the big meaty boys out wide and the, the quick guy in the middle. There's always a method. And there you go. There's your demonstration of the method. We've played very, very well today. Sutton had one shot in the entire match and scored it. Might have to have a word with our goalkeeper there because uh, that's not uh, it's not a great ratio for him to, uh, for him to have uh, done. Was that... In, hang on, in goal for Sutton, did I just notice at the end there, was that Rose who we used to have at Tamworth? We had him at Tamworth, right? No. That's Jack Rose. We had a Joe Rose. Did we have a Rose at Tamworth? 
Am I losing my mind now? Uh, goalkeepers. Joe Rose. There you go. I knew he had a J Rose. Different Rose. Multiple goalkeeper Roses in League Two, apparently. Let's go play Northampton. Well, we've sold another player. Jasper Moon actually left on the 1st of January, which was pre-arranged, so he is gone. Um, we've sold another defender, David Agbontahoma, who's gone to Bradford for £18,000. We signed him with £73,000 in the summer from Boreham Wood. He was not ready to make the step up to the Football League. Um, we probably are in need of a centre-back to come in, so it's something to monitor as we keep moving centre-backs on. We've also got a situation developing with Paul Smith, um, who has told me he's going to leave at the end of his contract, which is at the end of next season. So we are actively now looking to move him on. There's interest from Falkirk, so hopefully he'll be on his way. But this is the team for the game. Actually, no, this is not the team. This is not the team. Oh, it might be the team. Okay. I was going to play Leonard instead of Newell. Jack Newell is a young kid who is not good enough to be in that role and we're actually on the verge of loaning out. Um, however, he has played a couple of games for us this season and not done disastrously badly. So I don't mind using him there today. But Finn Azaz is now out for a couple of months um, or one month. He's done his hamstring. Um, so I think we probably need another attacking midfielder to offer some competition to Azaz because I like this system. I don't want to be going to the two up top um but with jack newell on the verge of leaving the club we need another attacking midfielder coming in but um for now this should be fine northampton i haven't looked where they are in the league northampton are when we actually get through to be able to see the league northampton are down in 18th place Obviously, they play in a tiny little stadium that looks like it should be at the side of a Sabutio pitch. Um, but it does have a Popeyes outside. So there's there's positives and negatives when it comes to visiting Cobblerville. Um, but obviously, as a Peterborough fan, I would like to come here and pick up three points. Please and thank you. Also, having to keep a hot on the tail of Tamworth, Wrexham and Doncaster in that top three. Because what we don't want is the playoffs at the end of the season because I, I mean, I, I don't make a big deal of it, so you might not have picked up on this, but I have quite a poor track record when it comes to playoffs, so I'd quite like to get promoted automatically, please. Although, of course, remember, the board were just happy with a top half finish this season. We don't have to get promoted at all, so if it looks like we can't get in the automatic promotion spots, maybe to save blushes, we'll drop out of the playoffs altogether so I don't have to go through the indignity of losing in them again. But fingers crossed, it won't come to that. We've still got about half the season to go. We've still got transfers to come in, and Stuart is in there, and that is a perfect example of where we would want a striker who's a little bit quicker, and it's probably going to be the long-term solution. Stuart, will probably score goals for us this season, as he's shown already. Um, but I think long-term, none of these three strikers who are on the pitch at the moment are our long-term solution. That time, Stewart does get there just ahead of the goalkeeper, but only with enough time to just kind of toe-poke it into that crossbar. Again, someone with an extra half-yard of pace gets there long enough to make some proper contact on that. And we're potentially 2-0 up with a, with a speedy... Typical, typical Kev striker, the kind of striker I would normally bring in. We are ahead in this game. And Stuart, um, I mean, even D, is that DJ or Dean, Dean Campton? Sorry, that might be a different guy. Is he the guy we've signed before? Who you, has he ever been called DJ? Campton Sturridge? Yeah, DJ Campton Sturridge. It is the guy. We've had this guy before in non to Legend. He would, he would have scored two goals for us today. Now I've clicked on him, he's going to score against us because that's the way Football Manager works. Um, but fingers crossed, we can still outscore them. It's been a very nothing first half, aside from those couple of chances that we've had. It shows the difference when we uh, when we don't have Thin as Az in there pulling the strings. We've got the youngster in there who doesn't seem to be getting the job done today. So I think we're probably going to need to shuffle things around tactically Early on in this second half, maybe bring on a second striker and go back to the 4-2-4 that we've used a couple of times. Or we've got someone like Adshed who could come on and maybe push Harper forward into that attacking midfield position. But I think it's pretty clear uh, Newell isn't really working there today. So I think we are going to bring on Williams. Williams came on and scored in the last game. So let's bring on... Williams is a different kind of striker. Uh, Stewart can play in his more natural target forward role then. 
and that might be the change that we need just to just to give us a little bit of something a little bit different. We've got that pacier striker on there now. If we get another chance like those ones that Stuart had in the first half, you would back Williams to do a little bit better with them because they're the kind of chances that are more his bread and butter. Nemzik now dropping deep finds Oshilaya, um, who is rushing forward to give the ball to Stockton and now Long is on the overlap, hits the big deep cross. This is where the big strong boys are at their best and we've won a penalty. Nemzik is fouled. It looked like a very soft penalty to me. But we'll take it because we are we are struggling to conjure up a good opportunity today. It's Harper to take, and he puts us one nil up. And that fingers crossed should be that for today because neither of these teams have looked like scoring a a goal from open play. So hopefully we'll just ride the rest of the game out now and uh, drive off into the sunset, enjoying our lovely Popeyes biscuit and gravy on the way home. Um, but let's uh, let's just continue to keep things freshened up we need wide players as well all of our wide players are getting injured they're dropping like flies um i think we are going to ugh, i don't really want to do this we're going to leave stockton on i was going to take stockton off because he's not having the best of games i guess we could put nemzik on the right put stewart out onto the wing and stick another striker on but it does seem, it, it becomes ridiculous at some point to keep playing our big boys out wide all the time. We haven't got Furlong on the bench today. Oh, I really am a silly goose. Right, that'll do for changes there. I, I realise we don't have to make substitutions. Nobody's particularly tired today. We're not playing a huge amount of football, so we probably could have just left things well alone there, but we have now got our fullbacks starting to get a little bit tired. So Samuels can come on there. Um, and we're going to bring on Tomkinson for long. And we can push Longwick out there to right back. And hopefully see the game out. Between the two of us, there have been... Two, although at the time I started that sentence, there had been two shots on target in the entire game. We've now had two each because we just wanted to make me look like a silly goose. But we are now into the final moments here. Hughes playing it forward nice and long looking for looking for the wrong guy though if you're going to hit the long ball aim for Stewart don't aim for Williams you silly goose um but it is now back with Northampton who are still quite calmly knocking the ball around at the back now they've decided to lump it long but we've got all the center backs on the pitch now so fingers crossed we should deal with them lumping the ball forward long all day long, although they are coming down this left-hand side where we have left ourselves a little bit exposed and there are now calls for a penalty? No? Hey, oh, it's their goalkeeper going forward, which is what all the kerfuffle was about. I thought there was a kerfuffle because it was a penalty, but their goalkeeper racing back, just shoot! I mean, somebody just shoot, the keeper's made it all the way back. Why are we not taking the shot there? Has nobody got the confidence to just hit it from the halfway line? and assume you're going to get it somewhere near the goal. You don't have to beat a keeper because there wasn't one there. That just seems very silly. And now we've got ourselves in trouble with that loose pass, but um, Hughes is uh, able to recover from it, put the ball out for a throw, and that should be it, hopefully. We've had a little bit of end-of-game excitement with the goalkeeper going forward. Can we just have the final whistle now, please? Tamworth have won again, which is uh, troubling. There's some handsome man has put together a really good team there at Tamworth. Maybe it's time we go and raid them with some of this money. I mean, I think that's a reasonable thing to do. Thinking in terms of players that we need. We do need some wide players. There's plenty here. We need an attacking midfielder. I mean, they've got Berry and Grant. We'd take either of them. We might just give the entire squad a little bit of a scout. Have our scouts give them the once over and see how these boys compared to the players we've got here at Burton. But with money to spend and good players just down the road... I think Adam Berry would fit in very nicely. But if you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.